Good morning, good morning, good morning, you lovely lot. It's Friday morning and it is quarter past ten. Um, and I've decided I need the sea. I haven't had the sea this year. So I'm going to go and spend the night by the sea. Um, I do believe there are some fun things for you to see at the sea. See at the sea. Um, so let's hope it's a good spot, hey? <laughs> it's had good reviews and I'm sure many of you will know where it is when you see it. Um, but yes. Oh, there's a squirrel just running across the wall with a big nut in his mouth. Hi, squirrel. That totally distracted me. That really was a squirrel moment, wasn't it? <laughs> squirrel! Do you know what? I'm actually quite hot now. It's quite chilly out there, but Brendan's let me take his big fluffy jacket that I kept nicking last winter because he said I might need it. Oh, very sweet of him. I might need it uh, down by the coast because obviously it'll probably be windier down by the coast. So. Um, let me see that sort of twist. What is going on? What's going on? Sorry. It's very professional, isn't it? To be fair, I never claim to be professional. YouTube is a hobby. You want professional, you have to find a different channel. Right, so I'm going to put in the sat nav where I need to be and then we are going to head off. So worth the travel. Do you want to see the view? Do you? It's gorgeous. My view for the day. Let's go exploring, shall we? Let's go and check out this castle and have a walk along this high shingle, I don't know, causeway, would you call it? I don't know. It's about two miles long apparently to the castle and then there's also a lighthouse as well one of four that have been built but i think because of erosion um over the years this is kind of the last one they've built and i don't know how long it will be there for i guess we'll just see
might not be what you consider to be your standard British castle, but this was built by Henry VIII between 1541 and 1545 to protect, well, to protect this part of the ocean and uh, this part of the land from being invaded by French and uh, Holy Roman conquerors, apparently. What you will notice is there are these parts, which were obviously later, and then there's the parts inside, which were the original castle bits. And obviously it's been expanded on through several world wars and various other wars to uh, make this place more fortified, bigger guns brought in, bigger armoury brought in. I believe it was used as a prison as well at one point. I feel a little bit like I'm entering Alcatraz. Look at those walls. Ready? Oh my goodness, it's so tall. I wouldn't mind living there, in one of those cottages. Manning that lighthouse, I reckon that'd be a good job. I can imagine the weather gets pretty bad at times though. Maybe we could take a ferry back. That might be a fun little ride. So these rails would have been for the cannons to bring things in and out, obviously. Drawbridge. There we go. There's the point. Change direction to move them around. It's a pretty big gun. Can you imagine sitting on that, cranking that handle, and taking down planes and goodness knows what else. And that there is your 38 ton gun. That's pretty impressive. Look at the bullet. <laughs> that is just crazy. By 1886, there were 10 of these in this castle. That's not including the other guns either. Look at the size of them. So this big rope carpet or matting, or I think they called it a mantlet, um, was soaked in uh, calcium chloride and water and it was hung up here so that one, it didn't catch fire when sparks went off and two, to protect the people on the guns from anything flying back at them. This is an actual field kit and uh, documents that were donated by this guy's son. Dates back to World War One. Here you can see elements of the original building back from Henry VIII's time. So these guns took about 12 people to operate for the loading and the firing. And reload and firing took about six minutes. So they were loaded through their muzzles. So they had to be moved back, which is why you've got all these tracks so they could get to the muzzle. It would take eight gunners to load one of those. 820 pound shell. This is definitely one of the older parts of the castle. Original castle.
So back in 1850, bits of this were reformed. And as you can see, filled up with concrete. That over on the other side is Fort Albert, which I believe Lee and I and the kids have been to. Pretty certain that's where we went to when we were on the Isle of Wight. So in the space of six years, Henry VIII built a chain of eight forts to protect the Solent. His first one was Coleshock Castle, which he completed in 1539, and then Hurst was finished by 1544. The French invasion arrived in 1545, but we were ready. The interesting thing is that this castle was so well positioned to defend the coast, it never actually fired any of its guns. As it turned out, the enemy ships would not come in from this side because of how well fortified it was. They'd only come in from the east. So it certainly put them off. Eight thousand years ago, the Solent wasn't even here. This was all forest land and rivers. And under that sea there are some fantastic fossils. Fantastic dinosaur fossils, wood. There's a brilliant uh, museum about it on the Isle of Wight. The stairs cupboard. I wonder if that's where they put their hoover. That's where I keep mine. You can definitely see where the original old meets the new. That there someone manning one of the lights. That's where it would have stood. Looked out across here and it was one hell of a powerful light. Enemy ships approaching! Enemy ships! Or planes. Wow, that's a stove, and that's some impressive pots. Sometimes I feel like I could do with pots that size, and a stove that size, when I'm cooking for all the kids. The bread oven room, that's what was cooked in here. Bread. Oh, an ammunition hoist for ammo to go to the roof. And that's the cartridge hoist. That dates back to about 1875, so they could bring the cartridges up from the uh, store, which would have been down there. Oh, this is more like the cannon I'm used to seeing. Not as huge as that other one, my goodness. Henry VIII's Coastal Defences, 1539 to 1540. So you've got one at the end of Wales there, Cornwall. Uh, not sure where that one is. Is that? Ooh, I'm not very good geographically. Uh, this is where we are. And then sort of, I don't know, Kent area. Gunpowder store. Halfway up the stairs. That would have been for the guns up here. On the roof. Please mind your head.
these toilets have been adapted from the original soldiers toilets um, and there's no fresh water so everything is uh, the, the water that you use in the taps here that's all salt water and it's had its very own salt water uh, flushing system since 1996 so uh, yes these would have been the soldiers toilets nothing fancy hey eh? these are World War II searchlights which they would have used here let's have a little snack and then we'll catch the ferry back look at this lighthouse look there just so happens to be some cash in my bag so I've decided that means I must have to catch the ferry back. I mean, I'm quite happy to walk, but I just thought that'd be a fun thing to do on my little day trip. That was a lovely boat ride. So I'm heading back to Spog now. A nice little stroll along this path. It's half past four. I am thinking about food. Now do I go and walk into the town and find some sort of takeaway? Or do I just have beans on toast? I don't have any toast. My bread went mouldy, didn't it? I do have tea cake. Can't you have beans on tea cake, can you? Hmm. I don't know, we'll see. You can see this is a popular spot for the van life community. There's quite a lot of us here this evening. And the nice thing is, as I keep telling people, a lot of van lifers clear up after themselves. Look, no rubbish. Well maintained. There are bins along here, so people are putting things in the bins. This seems to be the busier end, and I think that's because a lot of people like to park along there, because this bit can flood when the tide's in. Um, there is a bit of a risk with it coming up to the wheels. But even when it's flooded up as far as the cars, from what I've seen online, it's never really caused much of a problem. It's half past ten and I'm shattered. Oh, excuse me. I've not got the bed out. I thought I'd actually snuggle myself into this corner of the bench next to the cooker. <laughs> Obviously the cooker's not on and not actually get the bed out and then just sort of you know have spog a bit more open and if this turns out to be comfy and if i can sleep well in this spot it just saves getting the bed out at all doesn't it really um we'll see how it goes it's a bit tight a bit snug but that might be quite nice i don't think i'll be awake for much longer Oh dear. Anyway, thanks for following me on my travels. I hope you enjoyed the castle and the lighthouse. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Thanks for watching.